Today's scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. It says, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth and Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he would belong to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. You know, this Christmas story is, it can sometimes feel a little too magical. You know, it's, it's a holy story, but we have all these things that are happening that are kind of hard to believe. A, a virgin who is pregnant, about to give birth to the Savior of the world, probably not on your bingo list for what's going to happen in December. Now there is the fact that the Messiah is coming, or there's angels that are talking to shepherds, and there's no room in an inn. Sometimes it can feel like too much fantasy. It's, it's too holy to connect to our lives even when we believe the story to be true, which I do believe it to be true, we can set it so far apart from our lives because of how magical, how impossible it is. I think it's important for us to look at the story in very practical ways because that's how it connects mostly to our lives in a practical way because I don't know about you, I'm pretty practical in my life. So let's see what it says. It says that in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken to the entire Roman world. And this was in the first census that took place while Quirinius was in governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. Even at the time of Jesus, we see that people who have no idea what they're doing, making decisions for no reason whatsoever, affects our lives on a daily basis. If you didn't get that, the person next to you did. They'll explain it to you. But... Even at the time of Mary and Joseph, the government messes up the lives of those around them. And we see here in this, in this situation that's happening with Mary and with Joseph, a decision has been made for them that they now have to live into. You know, I doubt Mary treasured up in her heart the 90-mile journey in her third trimester from Nazareth to Bethlehem. I'm willing to bet either walking or riding on the donkey, that wasn't one of those things that she thought, mm, yes. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> I imagine this was not enjoyable for Joseph either. I imagine he was not really excited about the concept of, I have to go with family I really don't talk to that much, and if something happens on the road, it's It's me. <laughs> That's the greatest fear of any father who's driving the car. Hold it in. <laughs> Just hold. <laughs> Let us get to the hospital, please. For the love of Jesus, yes, that one. Let's just hold on. No one wanted this to happen. This was not a, this is part of the plan situation. And sometimes things happen to us that are beyond our control, that can completely change our lives. You know, Mary and Joseph would have much rather been at home in Nazareth with family, with a midwife, people they could rely on, in a, a bed that was comfortable, in a, a space that they knew. Even if that was a tense location, there's something to be said about being home. Mary and Joseph would have never made a decision on their own to, you know what, Bethlehem seems like a great pregnancy vacation. <laughs> Let's just go check it out. I hear it's like the destination to give birth nowadays. Let's just go there, see what they got going on. I doubt that. I think if it was up to Mary and Joseph, even though they were following God's plan fully, that wasn't the part they thought was part of God's plan. Imagine they were just willing, okay, we're going to have the baby. And Joseph's like, yep, I get it. It's yours, God. <laughs> I understand. But now this is something else that changes it all. It is what it is. We get to the relative that they plan to stay with when they go to Bethlehem. It turns out that that relative has so many people in their home, there's not a space for them in the guest room of the relative's home. 
So then they have to stay, not in the guest room, but in the lower level where the animals are kept. I'm sure Mary pondered that as well. <laughs> this young teenager who is now giving birth to her first child, who happens to be God's child, with the man who's pledged to be her husband, but it's not her husband yet, with the animals. It's not how anybody planned it. And life is like that. It doesn't exactly go to plan. This reminded me, um, Chloe, my daughter, she um, turned seven in six days. I remember for her birth, we had a plan. There was a Spotify playlist of songs that were going to keep Sarah nice and in scripture, great scripture to be read. And we had a doula and an OBGYN that we loved. Things were going great. And then Chloe was a little late, so we got to plan it. I think the doctor wanted to get her out for this year's taxes, right? So she was due today, the 24th. We scheduled in inducing the 30th. So we go in, we, you know, get the trip for the, for the induction. We're, okay, we'll take a nap. It'll be great. Sarah wakes up, and it's go time. And not like, a, oh, it's good. No. Less than 30 minutes between when Sarah woke up to baby being born. The OBGYN did not get there. The doula did not get there. Spotify was not played. <laughs> and who knows where the Bible was at that point. We ran out and grabbed a random person and said, you look like a doctor. Can you deliver a baby? <laughs> and that was just kind of how it happened. And Chloe was here. It wasn't really something at the time. I was like, this is great. Everything is awesome right now. But it was what a blessing. This happened, often how it happens. We have these unexpected blessings. These things that we have all planned out. Our lives are fully planned out. Things are exactly the way they're going to be. Perfect. And then as the great poet Mike Tyson once said, <laughs> every plan only lasts as long as you get, until you get hit in the mouth, right? Life hits you in the mouth. Things change quickly. And we can either decide that we're going to be upset about the fact that our plans didn't happen or take the unexpected blessings that come from them. You see, the unexpected things often turn into the biggest blessings. Maybe today is an interruption for you. Let's be honest. Can we be real for a second? Some people come to church on Christmas Eve out of obligation. Do you know that? <laughs> because someone they love that probably got them a gift for Christmas has said, you're going to attend church today. <laughs> And the person said, okay. <laughs> That's not what people sometimes want to do. It's not like, oh, yeah, let's all go to Christmas Eve services. Great. Maybe this is an interruption in your life. Maybe you're just thinking, okay, I have to get through this so I can get to the football games that are happening this afternoon and things will be great. Or if we just get through this and then we have dinner and it'll be great, we'll have time with family. Whatever it is, this could be an interruption. Isn't it silly sometimes how Jesus is the interruption for Christmas? <laughs> We had in the interruptions, we often find ourselves not fully prepared. When you're prepared for everything, your decisions are already made, your life goes the exact way you want it to, but it's not until you're disrupted, it's not until your, your plans have been interrupted that you can actually respond in a genuine way. You see, if everything's going as planned, then you're automatic. You're a machine. You're just working. I imagine some of you in this year have felt like a machine at work. <laughs> Maybe even a machine in your home. You just do the things that are required of you. You try to do the best you can. Just keep moving. Just keep swimming. Do whatever it takes to get through it. And then God interrupts you. The plans change. And oftentimes those are where the blessings are. So I want this, this truth to be the interruption that maybe you have today. That God truly loves you. And that's not some anecdotal love. God loves you right now where you are exactly with what you're doing. You don't have to get right for God to love you. God just loves you. We see that in the story of Christ. God is willing to interrupt the lives of Mary and Joseph 
to show us his love for us. Jesus came to show you and, and I that we are loved. He would come after us just so we could be in relationship with God. Jesus came to bring you peace, joy, hope, and love all through the power of his grace. Many of us probably haven't had a lot of hope this year or peace. For some, it's been a lack of joy. And sadly, according to statistics, most of us don't feel loved. Isn't it amazing that those are the things that God promises us through Christ? The things we need the most in our lives. So how are you going to respond to this interruption? You know, in Christmas we open presents. Maybe this year you can open up the, to the presence of grace. Just to realize that this whole Christian walk is not about following directions. It's about acknowledging that you are loved and loving that God who loves you back as best as you possibly can. So maybe today you lean into the interruption and let it be a blessing because the, the best blessings in life come from the interruptions. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we are so thankful that you interrupt our plans because if we're honest, all of our plans are made from a very, very, very small point of view. All of our plans are selfish. Most of our plans, God, don't look out for others and instead look out for ourselves. Most of our plans, God, seek to bring us success, not peace. Seek to bring us status, not joy. And as the season comes to its culminating moment this evening and tomorrow, as we celebrate the gift that is Christ, let us celebrate the gift that Christ brings us, a relationship of peace, of hope, of love, and of joy, and allow that interruption to be the blessing that we also desperately need. We ask all this in the name and power of Christ. Amen.